Okay. This is a video to explain the first step in your physics internal. In this video, all we're going to do is explain how to make a data table to make a straight line graph. So, the data table that we get from the original data looks something like this, where you have the length of each pendulum and you have the average times of going in circles. So, then we've also already worked out the average. Now, if we graphed the length of each pendulum and the average time to go around circles, we would not get a straight line. In this experiment, the whole purpose of this is not actually to graph the length, it's to graph the centripetal force. So the centripetal force of each pendulum is found in the instructions right here, where each length is used to find each centripetal force. And even then, if we just graphed, the two things in the aim, the period and the centripetal force, we would not get a straight line graph. This all hinges on formulas that are always supplied to you. Down here, we have these equations in this experiment. We have the two things mentioned in the aim inside this experiment. It's not the period, it's 1 over the period squared. We also have another formula over here, where we could have said, we keep the period and we do 1 over the centripetal force in the square root. Those are our two possibilities. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is explain how to make linear graph for this formula right here. So, what this means is we need each FC, and we need 1 over the period squared. So we go back to our Excel data table. Each length, what I've done is I've calculated each FC. So I've just calculated each FC, from the instructions. Now, we need 1 over these numbers squared, so what we can do is we can just type in 1 over dv squared. You do 1 over, click on the number you want, use the little symbol of an arrow above the 6, and then the squared value. Once you hit equals, it makes the number for you. That 0.223 is 0.2.12. Put into that formula. If you drag down the little tiny x, this is the little tiny x right there. If you click on it and drag down, it does the same exact calculations for each of the numbers over there. So you can do it by hand, or you can have Excel do it for you. I personally would also change the cells, so you change the formatting of the cells so that the number only has a certain number of decimal places. Now, since our original data had three sig figs, I personally would say that each of these numbers should have three significant figures, so since they're all less than one, we give them three significant figures. Now, we have our data that matches with one of the formulas supplied on the background. This is 1 over t squared, and the units are 1 over seconds squared. 